Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's an honor to stand this morning in support of Bill C-245, an act to amend the Canada Infrastructure Bank Act. Now, it's important to note, it was just over three years ago that parliamentarians in this chamber admitted we are in a climate emergency. So if it's an emergency, we should probably act like it. In fact, that's what international climate scientists have been calling for as recently as their most recent April report. The co-chair said, it's now or never if we want to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, the internationally agreed uh, uh, maximum amount to limit, uh, uh, to in ensure that we take action at the pace that science tells us is required. Now, one way to do that is to take existing crown, corp uh, crown corporations and direct their resources towards solving the climate crisis that we're in. And that's why I support C245, along with the member for Saanich Gulf Islands. And that's why I really appreciate the member for Churchill, Kiwatin Nukaski, for bringing this legislation forward as her private member's bill. The bill recognizes that communities are at the forefront of the climate crisis. And as such, it shifts the priorities of the Canada Infrastructure Bank to be explicit about supporting climate adaptation and mitigation efforts, specifically in three ways. One, removing parts of the Infrastructure Bank's mandate that allows it to seek out private investment. Two, increasing transparency of the bank by requiring regular reporting to Parliament. And third, ensuring that First Nation, Inuit and Métis communities have a seat at the table on the board. As it stands today, well, the Canada Infrastructure Bank was established back in 2017, arm's length from government, with a budget of $35 billion. What an opportunity. Last year, the Parliamentary Budget Officer reported that it wouldn't even spend half of that amount over the next 11 years. Well, what a wonderful way to, to activate those funds. Because if we're going to follow through, as other speakers have mentioned, communities across the country are calling out for more. Municipalities are taking a leadership role. Waterloo Region is one example of that. But if communities across the country are going to follow through at the pace that science requires, they're going to need the federal government to step up. Recognizing that the Canada Infrastructure Bank as it stands today requires projects to be revenue generating, meaning they have to charge public user fees, tolls directly or indir indirectly to meet the needs of private investors. Instead, if approved, this bill would redirect those billions, those tens of billions of dollars towards the infrastructure projects we need, whether that's helping communities move off of diesel, moving to high-speed rail, the list goes on and on. One person I respect on this topic, his name is Seth Klein, and he's talked about thinking about the climate crisis, the urgency we need, the same way that we might have thought in past about wartime efforts. I'd like to share with you a quote from Mr. Klein. He says this, but in response to the climate emergency, we've not seen nothing of this sort. In contrast to C.D. Howe's wartime effort, the Liberal government has established two Crown corporations during its time in office. The Canada Infrastructure Bank, a vehicle for privatizing infrastructure that has thus far accomplished very little, and the Trans Mountain Corporation, an ill-advised decision that makes all Canadians the owners of a 60-year-old oil pipeline. If our government really saw the climate emergency as an emergency, it would quickly conduct an inventory of our conversion needs to determine how many heat pumps, solar arrays, wind farms, electric buses will need to electrify virtually everything and end our reliance on fossil fuels. Then it would establish a new generation of crown corporations to ensure those items are manufactured and deployed at the requisite scale. And to think of the jobs we could create in this transition good, unionized, well-paid jobs to transition our economy to that of the future. When I reflect on Mr. Klein's words and I look at what's in this bill, that's what excites me about, about this.
because Bill C-245 would be one step along a long journey, not only aligned with Mr. Klein's vision, but that which climate scientists are telling us is required. And that action isn't in eight years. It's certainly not thinking about net zero by 2050. The action's required now. And there are bills before this House, like C-245, that would equip us to do it. Because that is the most important thing. It's not what one party or another bickers with each other about. This, in fact, isn't partisan partisanship at all. What is required of us, how future generations will judge us in this chamber, is whether we collectively acted at the pace that scientists tell us is required. And take, rather than giving billions of dollars in new subsidies to fossil fuels, to invest it in the infrastructure we need. This bill is one we should all embrace, and I'm proud to, su to support it. Thank you. The